since I've done the impossible, I have 15 new Zoom games for you. Yes, you can find 100 Zoom games on my channel already, but today I have 15 new ones for you. I know, you thought it was impossible, I thought it was impossible, but there is more. If we are meeting for the first time, hi, my name is Sean. Welcome on this channel. I am passionate about bringing people closer together through fun and games. If you end up liking this video, I'd love for you to consider subscribing to the channel because I post content like this every week. The first game, the title may seem like you know what I'm gonna talk about, but there's a twist to it. <laughs> the first game is called Guess Who. Of course you can play the traditional Guess Who board game like this right here, but this version of Guess Who has a twist. This game is perfect for a large class on Zoom where you have all of your tiles and you can see everybody. If you don't know how to do this, it's through gallery view. I have a tutorial on how to display everybody on your Zoom call on your desktop in one gallery view. I will post a link to that video in the description box down below. So the grid of students is like your board game on Guess Who? You as a teacher, you're going to think of one student in your class and maybe write their name down on a piece of paper. Students will then ask yes or no questions to eliminate and see whose name you have written down on the piece of paper. The first student to guess which classmate is written down on your piece of paper is the winner. But remember, students can only ask yes or no questions to the teacher. Game number two is called the Minnie Mouse Game. To play this game, you will use the whiteboard feature, the drawing tools, and you will need one die Per person. Here you will see me drawing Minnie Mouse on the whiteboard feature and you'll see different numbers for the different parts of Minnie Mouse. On the count of go, students will roll their individual die and as they roll in order they will create their Minnie Mouse and the first person to create Minnie Mouse is the winner. The next game is called ABC Scavenger Hunt. Now I found this on <laughs> the Dixie Cups website. If I can find it again, I will post it in the link below because they had a lot of really cute games. Who would have thought that Dixie Cups would have games and also food recipes on their website? Players will also need scissors, a marker, and a paper plate. Using the markers, write the alphabet around the edge of each plate. Using the scissors, make a small cut on either side of each letter to form a tab. Write each player's name on the center of the plate. Players can decorate the plates if they want to. So the way that you adapt this to Zoom is once your students have created their game board, they will look around their space and bring something to their desk that starts with the letter of each alphabet. And whoever finds objects for all of the letters in the alphabet first wins the game. So first player to find all 26 letters of the alphabet all right, this next game is called Day in Review. This game will be great at the end of the class period, at the end of your virtual distance learning class period, your end of your homeschool day, or you just wanna check in with your grandkids and see how their school day went. This is the game for that. One person chooses a letter, then going around the Zoom squares of faces, each person describes their day in one word that is the next letter that the first person chose. Does that make sense? One person chooses a letter. Then you're going to go around and everybody gets a turn that is on the Zoom call. Each player will then describe their day without using the letter that the first person chose. So this seems a lot harder than it sounds. Or is it the opposite? Does it sound too hard? It's a lot easier than it sounds. Okay, so say the first person chooses S. Well, then you have to, all the other players have to describe their day with a word that doesn't begin with S or words that don't begin with S. So you can't say, my day was super fantastic. And I would lose the game because I use the word super, which begins with the letter S, which the first player identified as the letter we were avoiding. You could say something like, I had a awesome day of class instead of school, right? <laughs> I almost I almost lost my own game. This is a great game to test your vocabulary skills. 
The next game is a memory game. You're gonna begin by stating a sentence, and then each person after you has to state the same sentence and then add on to it. So for example, I went to the park and saw an alligator. The next person would then add, I went to the park and saw an alligator while fishing. <laughs> and then the next person would add on to that sentence and it really tests your memory skills to see if you can remember what everybody said. So whoever is at the end of this game has the most difficult time. The first person to forget part of the sentence loses the game. The next game is called Mystery Bag. Ooh, Mystery Bag. What is in the Mystery Bag? Before your Zoom meeting, prepare a mystery bag, put something mysterious on the inside of it, and then to play this game, you will give clues and students have to guess what is in the bag. It would even be fun. You could also turn this into a little party of sorts by asking every student to come to the Zoom call with their own mystery bag with a mystery object on the inside. So the next game is called Roll a Rainbow. Why did I sing that? That was really weird. To play Roll a Rainbow, every player is going to need die. One, one singular die, a piece of paper, and some color pencils, crayons, markers, colorful rainbow colors. Set a timer for one minute and see who can build their rainbow first. I love rainbows. Who here loves rainbows? Give me a little rainbow emoji down in the comment section if you also love rainbows. The next game is a traditional word search. You may say, Sean, that sounds a little boring, but I am sure you have a favorite word search, worksheet, PDF, book that you absolutely love, that your kids love, and you're like, I wish I could use this in my virtual classroom, but I can't. Yes, you can, you can. Did you know that you can take any PDF and make it interactive on Zoom? Super cool, right? You don't have to go out and buy something new. You can just scan in a, your regular, any old word search you have laying around your house or in your teacher files, scan it in, make it digital, and pop it into Zoom. I have a tutorial all about how to make your PDF interactive so you can do a word search together with your kids. I'm gonna post a link to that tutorial right here. The next game is MASH. Do you remember this? We always played this at slumber parties when I was a kid growing up. We would play it in middle school, like with during homeroom started, we would play MASH. MASH is a super easy game to play on Zoom. So if you're looking for birthday party ideas while you're here, MASH is a great one to do that. If you're looking for a throwback game, MASH is a great game to do that. I found this little printable here free on Pinterest. I'll post a link to it down below. And you just simply follow the instructions. I'm going to refer back to the video I created on how to make any PDF interactive on Zoom because you're going to need to know those tools in order to play MASH on Zoom. The next game idea is a silly name game. I know you've seen these these pop up on Facebook all the time. I found this really cute penguin one on preschoolpop.com. I will leave them linked below. It is absolutely adorable, but there are tons of these free ones all over Pinterest of varying themes, but simply play this silly game online, come up with your own silly penguin name, and have fun being silly on Zoom together. The next game is called Number Out, and it is similar to how you would play Four Corners, except you're going to write numbers down on scraps of paper, and every student will need their own scraps of paper with numbers on them. So instead of moving corners around the room, students will hold up pieces of paper. Have students cut or tear a paper, and write the numbers one through six on each one of them. Each round, students will choose to hold up one number. The teacher will roll a die and the students holding up that number are out. They are eliminated, they are gone. Continue playing until only one player remains. And of course that person is the winner. The winner, the winner, the winner, the winner. This next idea I have talked about before, I have a separate video on, but I have a new way of playing it, zoomed in. Yes, I have given you multiple ways to play this game before. I will link the other ways to play it in the description box down below, but I have a new way. I have a new way to play Zoomed In that I think you're going to like. When playing Zoomed In, you begin by looking at images that are magnified or zoomed in very close. Collect and save several images prior to your virtual meeting. You all know I love sending you to unsplash.com to find these free images. Before you start the meeting, 
Also open up the images in preview. This is very important. Before you start your meeting, go ahead and have your images opened up. Preview is great to use because you can easily zoom in and out using the magnifying glass icon. So when you're ready to play, all you do is share your screen so everyone can see the image. And at first, you only see a portion of the image. And as players get guessed incorrectly, you slowly zoom out using that little magnifying glass. All right, did you like that one? Did you like that version of zoomed in? Let me know in the comment section down below if you did. The next game is called Name, Place, Animal, Thing. That sounds like, um, what is it? Gorillas, bears, monsters, oh my. No, that's not it. <laughs> that's not it. From The Wizard of Oz. Bears, lions, tigers, oh my. Tigers, lions, bears, oh my. Is that it? <laughs> No, this is name, place, animal thing. This game is great for older kids. So to play, pick a letter. Any letter, there's 26 letters in the English alphabet, pick a letter. Each student has to list a famous person's name, a place, an animal, and a thing that all begin with the one letter that you picked. The first person to type all of those things into the chat is the winner. Easy peasy, live and squeezy. Another game that I love to play is Connect Four. You guys love this game? I love the traditional board game Connect Four. Man, there's nothing like getting that satisfaction when you get four in a row and you're horizontal, diagonally, vertically, any way about it. Man, I love, we used to play this all the time as a kid. This is super easy to play on Zoom. You're going to need a free printable like this one here that I found on Pinterest. Go ahead and share your screen on Zoom and then simply use these shape tools as your pieces. So this is a great one-on-one -on -one player so only two people can play at a time. Choose, one person chooses one shape, the other person chooses another shape and you play that like you would regular four in a row connect four. All right, so the last game I have for you is called Vulture and Crows. Now I'm going to explain this game fast, <laughs> but only because I'm gonna make a separate video on how to play this game that will be just about this game because it is, I feel like it is a little complicated, but I wanted to just throw it out here in this video so that you know it exists and that it's a great game to play online. This would be a good one-on-one -on -one game. This is not good for a classroom. So to play Vulture and Crows, you're going to need the whiteboard feature and the shape tools. If I have already made the video all about this game, it will be posted in the description box down below. If it's not there, that means it's coming. You need a game board that looks like this, like a star. You could do this one of two ways. You could draw this game easily on the whiteboard feature within Zoom, or I have a free printable that I will post in the description box down below that you could use through the screen share feature in Zoom. You're going to need seven crows. So basically seven shapes using the shape tool. You're gonna to need one vulture. So your crows and your vulture need to have two different shapes. And then of course you need two players. The crow's objective is to block the vulture from moving. The vulture's objective is to capture four crows by jumping them. So crows begin the game. Place one shape on any space. The vulture plays his shape on any open spot. Next, the crows place their a second shape on any empty spot. Now be sure to prevent the vulture from jumping and capturing you. Now the vulture starts to move, so you know what that means. The hunt is on. The vulture is after the crows. The vulture can move to any open and, ad and adjacent spot in a straight line only. Crows must continue to fly into open spots one by one until all crows are on the board. The vulture continues to hunt, looking for a way to jump and capture a crow. Once all seven crows have settled on the board, players begin moving a shape on each turn. Now crows move in the same manner as a vulture, however, crows are not allowed to jump over any other shape. So if you want to see how to play this game in a slower manner, watch the video I have linked in the description box below. If it's not there, it is coming. I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Virtual hugs, virtual hugs, virtual hugs. Bye.